everybody, this is Chad with Reno Little Theater, and it is Tuesday, which means it's Tips of the Trade. And what you're going to get from me today is part of a presentation I recently did with Ollie, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, uh, and we were able to do it on Zoom, and so uh, they've been generous enough to let us share this with you. We're going to be splitting it up into three separate parts. Uh, part number one that you will see today is about scenic design, uh, and that's from uh, beginning to end, if that's what you call it. Beginning to opening. Yeah, we'll call it that. Uh, so this is a little bit from that. I hope you guys enjoy. As uh, Kristen said, I've, I've worked in theaters uh, all over. Um, I've been doing this for 20-odd years, almost 25 years, I guess now, uh, with a few breaks here and there. And uh, I've done everything from uh, on stage and all the backstage stuff and administrative stuff. And, and uh, this is where I happen to land right now in my career uh, here at uh, Reno Little Theater as production manager, technical director, and resident designer, and co artistic director with um, um, Melissa Taylor, who's the executive director at, at Reno Little Theater. Uh, so, what I'd like to do today is I'd like to chat a little bit about. Uh, some of the backstage stuff. Um, technical theater um, and design uh, focus really uh, more specifically on scenic design and lighting design. Uh, and then I'd like to chat a little bit about stage management, which is a, uh, uh, it's a, it's an aspirational love of mine. I love stage management. I love stage managers. Um, I don't like to do stage management. It's a really tough job. But we'll talk more about that. In a little bit. Uh, so, uh, essentially, there are uh, two parts of the theater. There's on stage, uh, which is the actors. That's what you see. Those are the people that um, get many of the accolades uh, and do a lot of really hard work. And they're on stage, and we see them, and, and they're beautiful, wonderful, fantastic artists. And then off stage is essentially everyone else. Uh, you've got production staff, which includes directors, set designers, lighting designer, props designer, costume designer, production manager, technical director. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, most of that stuff is pretty self-explanatory. A production manager uh, is somebody who oversees uh, all of these production elements, costumes and, and rehearsals and, and lights and all that stuff. They oversee all of those things, make sure making sure that everyone is on task and on, and on budget and maybe also uh, depending on on uh, the makeup of the theater uh, they might also coordinate sort of a cohesive artistic vision for all of the production elements and then a technical director uh, technical directors um, are folks that make sure that everything uh, is done safely uh, on stage all the sets are built um, Oftentimes, uh, how the lighting is rigged um, and making sure all of that is safe and what have you. And then uh, you also have off stage, you also have a production crew, uh, and that includes carpenters and painters and uh, electricians and seamstresses and artisans and uh, all of those things. Um, and then you also have backstage crew, which is slightly different than production crew. Backstage crew um, will work the show itself. Production crew, um, they don't generally work the performances. Backstage crew are there at every performance, so they could be deckhands and dressers and operators and uh, those things. And then, uh, uh, making all of this float, we've got our administration, which includes can include an executive director, a managing director, artistic director, uh, development director, program, and then um, because we are, as many theaters are in the country, we are a nonprofit, 501c3. We also have a board of directors, uh, and they're um, a wonderful group of people that um, helps make sure that we can do what we do. Now the glue. The glue that holds all of this together is our stage manager. Um, and there is a hierarchy uh, in, our, in stage managers, depending on how big your stage management crew is. Uh, at the top, we've got production stage managers, uh, then stage managers, then assistant stage manager, and then production assistants. 
uh, they're the gophers down below. And I've been that, and it's lovely and fun and wonderful. If you can see over on the side of your screen, I've got this little uh, uh, cartoon here. There's a lovely um, uh, cartoon that's been going on about backstage theater. Um, and uh, uh, this is just a little thing about stage managers. Uh, anatomy of a stage manager, brain for knowing everyone's minds. They have to know that. Uh, writing utensils, which is also a weapon. Uh, you can see their eyes are sleep deprived uh, and therefore glaring at people. Uh, super secret gas tape supply, gas tape that's always uh, uh, hard to find at theaters. Um, the shoes, they contain the remnants of feet because um, they're always running around. Got a caffeine twitch because you got to stay uh, uh, up and on it. Voice can cut through steel, also a weapon. Uh, book, that is the script or the prop. Prompt book is uh, what they call it, and they're perpetually on it, looking at it. And then ground, walked on to be worshipped, always worship the stage manager. Uh, so uh, moving on a little bit, um, we're going to look at production, uh, part of the production um, design, which is designing the show. Um, and uh, we're going to look specifically first at uh, scenic design. Um, just want to point out a few pictures here, the big picture, uh, and I don't know which direction yours are oriented in. On my screen, it's to my left. Um, big picture that is from a show we did a few years ago called Equivocation. Uh, lovely little show there. Uh, up in the upper right, my upper right hand corner, um, that's Murder on Green Meadows we did a few years ago. And then actually the one in the lower, uh, corner, the small and the lower corner. That was the first show I did at Reno Little Theater, uh, and that is a production of Red, uh, which is um, about Mark Rothko, the painter. Uh, in fact, that painting that you see on that on the in the picture right there is right behind me, right here, hanging on our office wall at the theater. That's kind of funny. Uh, so set design. Set design is essentially where to put stuff and what stuff looks like. That's kind of it. That's kind of the basic thing of what set design is. And there are a lot of ways we figure that sort of thing out. Oh, I should tell you. Uh, so this little picture that you see over there, that is a detail of Enchanted April, uh, which we did, I think it was in our 80th season. That might have been about five years ago. Great Chef, can I ask a quick question? Oh, certainly. Someone had the question of what is gaff tape? Oh, what is gaff tape? Uh, gaff tape is a cloth uh, tape. It's black. Um, it's what is used 98% of the time in theater. It's very sticky, but because it's black, it, it hides. And so you can stick it uh, backstage. You can stick it on sets, and uh, you can also paint it. Uh, and so it's easily disguisable, and um, it's, just, it's so much better than things like uh, scotch tape or masking tape or painter's tape. Those things don't really take the abuse of uh, theatrical performance. So, uh, all right. Uh, this set uh, that we've got over here in this picture, that was from a production of Picasso at the La Panne written by Steve Martin. I actually directed that one as well as designed it. Okay, so when we're gonna design a show, uh, the first thing we have to do is read the script. We gotta know it, pretty obvious. Um, and then we start to formulate ideas. I start to formulate ideas based on the text. Um, so we've got some concrete ideas and then we've got stylistic ideas. So from reading the script and it says, um, uh, Rob enters from bathroom door stage right. Well, I know there has to be a bathroom door. It's probably going to be stage right, although that might change based on, on They're not uh, even involved. What, the, what the director is doing. Um, and well, then, like, uh, so that's oh. sort of the concrete thing. And if it also says there's a couch and three tables, then I know there has to be a couch and three tables, probably. Uh, and then there are some stylistic things that we'll find out from the script. It may say, uh, as soon as you open a script, it may say something like, um, uh, France, 1942, in a rundown apartment. And so we've got some real uh, specific stylistic things in there. It's France. So, you know, France builds things differently, designs things differently than we do. Um, uh, and then, you know, if it's 1942, then 
then we know there's a specific style of furniture probably there's a specific style of design uh there's going to be wallpaper there's a specific wallpaper for that time period um and if it says run down we know um stylistically that's got to come into consideration we might have to um distress some things or we might have to paint some things in a particular way to make it look run down stylistic and concrete uh, then what happens is I do a meeting of the mind, so that is generally me and the director, and we start talking about, um, well, what I want to hear is I want to hear any ideas the director might have. Now, sometimes directors come into the room and they have a really fleshed out idea of uh, what they want to see and how they want to see it, how they want it to function, and... Um, that can be a great place to start from. And then what I'm essentially doing is making sure, A, that we can do it, what they, they envision, and also um, really sort of just fleshing out details at that point. Sometimes directors come to me and they don't know anything about what they want. They want me to come up with everything. And that's great too. Uh, that gives me a lot of freedom uh, in design as well. Um, and then oftentimes it's sort of somewhere in the middle, a director might have specific ideas about some things uh, associated with the set design, but not have much of an idea about other things. And so we sort of build off of those cues of what they've given me. Uh, and then, uh, so I go back and I rework every idea that uh, I have uh, from that meeting and um, continually ask the question, um, why are we doing this? Does it uh, help the story? Um, is it necessary for uh, the production? Is it necessary to the script? Um, and then, you know, does it all work together with what's happening? And then I start to make drawings. Um, and sometimes I start with pencil sketches. Sometimes I just go straight to um, my CAD program, I use SketchUp, which is a, a Google product, um, and then we start, I start laying stuff out. Um, here I'm going to show you an example of uh, starting with initial sketches. This uh, sketch right here is for a production of Fortinbras that we did a few years back, uh, directed by Melissa Taylor. Um, and uh, this is a, the show Fortinbras is a darkly comic sequel to Hamlet, right after everyone dies, essentially. Uh, and so um, we happened to be traveling and we were in the Denver airport and we were sitting at a restaurant um, and all around us they had, there weren't walls, there were these um, structures that had these big metal flats in them and I was like, man, this is a beautiful look. I wonder if I can use this in a set design. And so I started sketching this particular design with that in mind. So as you can see uh, on your screen here, to the left, stage left and stage right, or your left and your right, whatever it is, um, we've got these um, what look like little shacks. Those are slatted walls with a slatted uh, roof on it. And they're on slanted, um, these were wagons. Um, there are two sort of things that sit on the ground in theater. One of them is a wagon, and one of them is a platform. A platform is obviously what it is. It's just a platform, and a wagon is a platform on wheels, so it'll move around the stage. So stage left and stage right, we've got these two wagons uh, with these walls on them, and then in center stage, I've got this bigger uh, platform that has this suspended um, uh, roof above it, and then there are these curtain in the background and then there's a you can see right in the middle of the upper bit there is a, uh there's a, like a shield uh and then that got crossed out and moved over to the left to stage left a little bit so that's the initial drawing and i went to melissa the director with this and um and we chit chatted about it um the next thing that happens is we do uh i do a ground plan and that is in SketchUp, and uh, that helps us, uh, well, it's a layout, a basic layout of um, where all of the elements are sitting on the stage. Um, and then with that, um, a director can start to block 
uh, uh, the show if they have at least that. Um, so then uh, you can see here the ground plan gives us an idea of where the walls are. Uh, it gives us some measurements, which is super uh, important. Uh, it also gives us doors, those red bits um, that have the, uh, the little arcs coming off of them. Um, those are doors. Uh, it's got some labels on it. I can tell you a few things. It's, you can tell where some stairs are here and there, um, angles, that sort of thing. So then from that, we go to our elevation. So I take that ground plan, and then I just start pulling up those walls. Um, oh, uh, this is the ground plan for uh, a production of the odd couple, the female version we did uh, a few years ago. This is the elevation from uh, uh, Fort and Brock, uh, again, that I showed the initial sketch. So uh, you can see um, we've got some similar things and we got some different things here because things are always changing. Uh, so right and left, we've got those wagons that I talked about, those platforms on wheels. They're still planted. You can see that I've blown out the walls, though, uh, mostly. There's some little bits uh, on the lower and upper portion. Um, and that was because I realized that it was going to be almost impossible to see people through those walls. Um, and then uh, they've still got the roofs on them here. Um, that the platform that was in the upper center, that is still there. You can see that it uh, looks a little different. It's got some things on it. Um, those are two uh, crowns, or sorry, thrones, two thrones that um, sit on top of that platform. There is a wedge uh, that actually folds out of it um, in front of one of those uh, uh, thrones there. And then uh, we've still got that roof uh, suspended up above that. Uh, and so then we, I start working with this. And uh, a lot of what happens in the transition from ground plan to elevation um, is I start to realize that things don't work. Uh, you can have this wonderful two-dimensional thing that lays uh, beautifully on the stage. But once you start pulling things up, you can see, okay, sight lines, uh, if you're in this, these five seats over here, are going to get totally blocked by this wall if this wall is at this particular spot on the stage. And so then I have to start moving things around and solving this problem. Uh, and then from there, uh, once I get uh, an elevation mostly complete, I'll start to do some detail drawing um, or some build drawing. And so this can, uh, once we switch over into building, um, this tells us how to do things, essentially. Gives us all the dimensions. We've got detail work in there. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, and then from there, uh, we try to do some renderings. Uh, rendering will give us a good idea of what it might possibly look like uh, when it comes time to open the show. Uh, this is the rendering for the odd couple that you saw the ground plan for. You can see all those walls have pulled up, and we've got some details on there, some lights. Uh, some light fixtures. The furniture is in there now. We've got a rug and... Um, so all of these details are sort of put in. You can see there's a person up center there, um, and that gives you some idea of scale and all those things. Yeah, uh, and so this is a really good, this is good not only for us as the design team, as the build team, um, to work from so that we know what stuff is supposed to look like or envisioned to look like, uh, but it's also good for the director too and the actors and the stage manager so that they can really start to understand how the set is going to function. Uh, okay, so we've made those drawings and um, we've got a few more steps until we get to a finalized set. Um, the set that you can see on your screen right now is for Peter and the Star Catcher, which we did a couple of years ago. Um, you may notice a similarity to the head up on top of that stair unit and this head right here. It is the same head. Uh, that was actually, you can't see it right now because I'm puking in that bucket, but um, I, that was the last time I was clean shaven like this. Uh, so after we've made those drawings, uh, or sometimes in the process of making those drawings, uh, I'll attend a rehearsal or two 
um, which is often sometimes called a designer run. And what I'm doing there is I, I watch what the director has um, directed their people to do, the actors do. I'm watching what the actors are doing. And I'm making sure that they are, um, because they're not rehearsing on the set. They're rehearsing essentially most of the time in just a blank room with some furniture. Maybe there's a door unit. Maybe there's a, a platform, a short platform unit or small platform unit. Um, but essentially, they they have to imagine the whole set as they're doing. And so I'm making sure that they are imagining what I'm also imagining, that they're using doors the same way that I have the doors opening. So maybe they, they're they using the door so it opens on stage, and I've got to design so it opens on know stage. Knows so, what people are um, it seems like. Uh, so then we do, um, I watch people that, and I... I talk a little bit with the director about and you're not doing. unmuted but sorry about that hold on one sec chad sure sorry i had to mute everybody and then i muted you on accident i apologize oh, for that interruption that's all right no. technology wonderful fantastic um so uh then we start once we work out uh, many of those things, and a lot of those things actually, uh, a lot of the details and some of the bigger concepts of the set design continue to evolve through the rehearsal process. We get um, rehearsal reports after every rehearsal, and in those reports uh, are details, many of the questions and uh, concerns and ideas that a director and or actors and or stage managers might have about the set and how it's working. Um, so that all, those sorts of things will come back to me and I'll have to figure out how to incorporate them or see if there are solutions. Um, and then we start to uh, build and paint and do all of those things. Uh, there is always something to change. No matter what you do, but even as we get to opening day, we are still changing things and making decisions about how things look or how things work, um, or how an actor is going to interact with a particular piece of scenery or set. And so, uh, finally, we open the show and we have a set to work with. These are production shots from Port Broad, uh, written by Lee Blessing, who actually came out to see the show. Uh, directed by Melissa Taylor and designed by me. Um, as you can see, some of the elements are uh, very similar uh, to what you saw in the drawing, and some of them are not. And um, you can see we've got those wagons uh, on those planted platforms, uh, left and right, but now they have almost no wall. Uh, I just, in building it, uh, starting to build it and design it and watching the way they were using it, imagined to be using it in the rehearsal process, I realized that having even two sides of, of wall or even wall structure was not going to work. Um, in thinking about lighting, I realized that having rooms on those little wagons was not going to uh, do us a lot of favors uh, in trying to light people on those wagons. So essentially, I stripped much of it down. Uh, you can see those thrones in the background. And uh, you can see they're sitting at a funny uh, angle, uh, planted back, and that's because they have to counter counter rake the platform in the center uh, that those fellows are sitting on. They're actually sitting on that wedge that folded out and became a bed of that whole thing head back there. Um, you can see, in, if you remember the initial sketch, I had those columns of uh, curtains in the background those got shifted and became this big swoop uh, uh, that came up, uh, came down from the, uh, the lighting rig and then held around there. That actually opened up in the center. There's a bit where somebody gets hanged. It's funny in the show, I promise. Uh, and it opened up and these legs came down and spun around. Uh, so that's it. That. Uh, you can see there's floor treatment on there too, um, which was a super fun, um, little thing to do there uh and that's that uh and then oops was that right oh so this is a, this is a, again showing you the the initial sketch that we came from and that's where we ended up. so that's 
so fun stuff. Uh, and then here are some production shots from the odd couple that you saw some drawings from. Uh, this was actually um, uh, by Neil Simon, uh, directed by Corey's sister, and this was designed by a fellow uh, out of LA, David Calhoun. Um, and so you can see, do I have that? Nope. Um, it, it's not terribly dissimilar. There are some things that change, like the rug uh, is different. A lot of the furniture is actually different. But the walls themselves, where they sit, how the doors open, all of those things are really um we kept, we were able to keep pretty true to his initial design, which is pretty amazing. I'll see some shots of the actors there. 